Hey guys, Shane here. This is like the seventh time I've tried to make this video because I keep rambling. Um, so, we're going to be taking a look at Ming Models 135th scale US Explosive Ordnance Disposal Teams. Wow, that's a bit of a, um, bit of a mouthful. So this is from their Human Series, reference number HS, break 003. And in this set we get two EOD specialists in their um, iconic bomb suits and two EOD robots and their respective control laptops. Very nice little set, good detail and something very, um, a very common sight on um, the streets of downtown Baghdad and, uh, <laughs> and in Afghanistan as the IED threats were quite severe in those countries and these guys were the unfortunate guys to have to go in and deal with it. So on the back of the box we have our assembly guide and pink callouts. The pink callouts I believe are from Falejo, it doesn't actually say, but looking at how the um, the reference numbers on each colour look strongly like um, a Falejo uh, uh, colour callout, so I most likely think this is from their model air range or model colour range should I say. So that's really there and then on the other side of the box we just have some adverts for their Bradley and Cougar MRAP uh, kits. So that's really the box out of the way. Then we have a small pamphlet. Again, really nice quality paper finish, which I know is not that important, but it does give a, a, um, a sense of quality to the overall product, which is nice. And it's something that I kind of picked up on immediately. So we have the assembly guide for our iRobot 510 Packbot which I believe is the smaller of the two EOD bots, or Robos, as the um, Defense Forces call them. We have one of the laptops that controls them, and a very cool little feature is the inclusion of a, a PS3 or a PS2 controller, which I think is kind of deadly. Really nice little <laughs> touch. And then on the back we have the assembly guides for our Talon EOD bot, and then for the final controller unit. So, nice, simple and very clear instructions there. But let's get down to the actual plastic. So we get four sprues, uh, three um, grey plastic sprues and one small clear pair, uh, sprue. So this is the contents of the box. These all do come wrapped in plastic. I just already unbagged them for the sake of expedience. It would be great if I could find a smaller sprue. There we go. So this is the basic contents of the kit, so let's pull in the camera and have a look. So we'll look at the larger of the four sprues first. So this um, sprue um, holds the majority of the parts for the EOD men themselves. And I'm not sure how well the camera is picking up the detail here, but it being my first time looking at a Ming uh, figure kit, I'm pretty impressed. Like they are a little generic and a bit stiff, yes, but again, they're wearing a rather bulky bomb suit, so I'd imagine moving in these things is quite awkward. I'm told it takes a massive amount of practice to get the coordination right wearing these suits. So, again, you can see some of the facial detail. Um, the two heads are identical. Let's focus, focus. There we go. So they are quite. The, they are the same head. Um, but once the Pfizer's, Pfizer's are down, you're not going to really notice the difference. Cool little feature, or well, a rather, well, it's a chilling feature, but it's kind of important that it is there. This is two artillery shells that are wired together as an IED. And this is what the, the chap who's kneeling is uh, in the process of defusing. defusing. That's great uh, diorama potential, something really out of the hurt locker if you're um, wanting to recreate any of the scenes from that film. Another nice little attention to detail, again the camera's not really picking this up for some reason. Uh, his hands are, the, the, the kneeling chap's hands are moulded, actually holding pliers for cutting the wires, which is a really nice detail. And again then we have the parts for the standing guy, again note just how bulky and unwieldy these suits actually look like, so they've done a good job in recreating them. If you were to look at any um, real reference photographs of these suits, they do look very awkward to move around in. So that's the main sprue. Very nice details, quite sharp, I have to, I'll give them that, it is quite sharp. Um, and I'd be curious to see what their other sets are like. 
Then we'll look at the very small clear sprue. These are the armored visors uh, for the suits. They do seem a bit thick. So I'm not sure if there's going to be a bit of a, uh, a magnifying quality behind them. Uh, we won't know until we put them together really. But they do seem quite clear. I can kind of see through them well enough. Um, if you're a bit worried about them, you can always dip them in clear to try to take some of the, um, the distortion out of them. Because they do seem a bit thick. And then the last two sprues are the actual bots and the control robots, or the control um, units for them. So this is the Talon EOD bot. So you can see these are little kits in themselves. They are very nicely detailed. Kind of delicate, so uh, some care will be needed while removing them from their sprues. We also have the rather chunky military laptops and their shockproof mountings, which are um, used to control these bots, I believe. Well, naturally. What else are they used for? And then we have the smaller bot, which is the um, pack bot, I believe it's called, the 510 pack bot. And again, nice detail. Very simple little kits, should go together very nice. You, there, there is a bit of posability in the extension arms on them, but um, they should build up nice and really go well with this set in a diorama situation. And there's the. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Doesn't really want to focus for me, but there is the um, the PS2 or PS3 controller, which is a really nice touch. And that's really it. There isn't that many parts in this set, but then again, it doesn't have to be. So if you're looking for um, something to add to um, an Afghanistan or Iraq diorama, I would really strongly recommend these because they were. An integral um, part of the operations in the Middle East during the wars and uh, would really add a nice sense of drama to any modern diorama. I would strongly recommend them, they're relatively well priced, I got mine for about 10 or 15 bucks, so a couple of euros, not too bad. And uh, I think it would be a very nice addition to any other uh, modern uh, collection. So I hope you found this review useful, I didn't mean to be too babbly but my mind's a bit fried for some reason. So uh, check out some more videos on the way. I should be having the second video up of my Tiger group build with Adam quite shortly. And until then, have a nice weekend. Stay safe as always and watch out for those buses. Bye bye.